Um, for Carlisle, our draft pick, Dennis Smith Jr. Mark, our own, Mark Cuban, our owner, and Donnie Nelson, our GM and president of basketball operations. I'm gonna turn it over to Mark just to do a quick opening statement, and then we'll do questions and answers. So um, I'll leave it up to Mark. Thank um, you very much. Well, first of all, welcome. Obviously, we're really, really excited to introduce Dennis. Um, you know, there's a lot of stories that circulate throughout the, the summer or the spring as people get ready for draft and there's mock drafts and there's analysts and there's scouts and there's a million and one experts. Um, but we have a great scouting department and Dennis is someone we've had our eye on since, you know, we started scouting this class and you know, we've done a lot of work, we talked to a lot of people, but of all the, the film, all the games we watched, all the people we talked to, the, the most impressive interview we had was when we talked directly to Dennis. Um, it's amazing how you read things, and then when you actually sit down and talk to the person, or have our folks talk to them, you, you know, the, the real person comes through, and you know, as, as much as I can, I can brag about his, his athletic abilities and his basketball abilities, just who he is and the way, you know, you guys know we have a team psychologist, Don Cogstein, and he, he grills kids, and you know, that some of them crumble. Not Dennis. Dennis really, really stood up, and, and we found out who he really is, and you know that's led to us being really, really excited. I mean, we were shocked when he fell to nine. We think we got the steal of the draft. So, um, with that, I'll turn it over to Dan. Well, Coach, you want to say anything? I know you and Don spoke last night. Just briefly, um, I want to welcome Glenn's uh, Glenn Schwartzman, uh, Dennis's agent, uh, Kim Grillier, who was. Uh, Glenn's assistant. Um, Glenn you know, Dennis's Dennis's cousin John. Dennis's cousin Isaiah. Dennis's cousin Isaiah, who's here, yeah. and we hear Glenn's daughter's here as well. So I'm all there. Uh, we're excited, and uh, we uh, we know we know that um, we've got a kid that's very motivated, that has tremendous ability, and our job going forward here is to. Um, Give him the tools to have ultimate success, to be to become a great player, um, to become a franchise caliber player. Um, you know, I really believe that uh, he understands there's a lot of work involved. Um, I don't believe he wants anything handed to him, uh, and I think he has full intention of earning everything. And uh, and we're excited to have him here today and uh, and to get started. I'd, I'd like to um, just publicly thank uh, Glenn again and Kim throughout the years. You guys have been incredible, and it's all about relationships at the end of the day. And uh, thank you for uh, making this all possible. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you all. And then uh, the guys that really don't get the spotlight, and that's uh, our scouting staff, and that's Michael Finley that's sitting over there. It's Keith Grant that's been with the organization for 157 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tony and the entire crew. There's a lot of hours, time spent domestically and overseas to make sure that we turn over every rock and we really feel that we've got uh, you know, the best uh, scouting staff uh, in the league. So I want to thank you guys. So Dennis, we'll turn it over to you. Let's start with questions. Oh, what? Let Dennis say something. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. Yeah, the Dennis sorry. Smith era. <laughs> 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 okay. Go for it. Okay. Um, I'm thankful to be a part of, of Dallas. I'm thankful to be a part of Mavericks. And I'm looking forward to a successful career here. All right, okay. now questions. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, the Mavs made no secret that this was a really important pick for them. What does that mean from your point of view? It means a lot to me. It's a great organization, a great group of guys, and a lot of Hall of Famers within this circle. So for them to go after me the way they did and, and respect my game the way that they do, it's a blessing. Dennis, you were you were seven months old when Dirk got drafted in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it like now for you to to share the court with share the court with him? How much are you looking forward to that? It's going to be hard to explain that. I haven't had the chance to meet him yet, so I think after I meet him, I can answer that question better, but I'm sure it's going to be exciting. I don't know how you feel about you saying that, but uh, <laughs> it's going to be exciting for both of us for something new. Rick, how much easier does a guy with Dennis, Dennis's athletic ability 
make the game for others and just for the fact that the Mavericks didn't play at a particularly fast pace last year to try to get the game going faster? How ultimately does that help the offense and be able to hopefully score more points? Well, you know, having a dynamic point guard that can get places, that can attack space, um, create help, kick to guys like Dirk, like Wes, like Barnes, you know, guys that can shoot the ball, um, be able to hit guys like New Orleans on rolls. I mean, it's just, it can really be a huge game changer. And so look, we've had, we've had good point guards here for a long time. Um, Jason Kidd is one of the best in, in franchise history, but he's a different kind of player than, than Dennis. Um, you know, Dennis has got some gears that, that we just haven't seen um, you know, on, on a point guard you know, in, in this organization since I've been here, and maybe, maybe, maybe ever. And so that's exciting. Um, I believe he has the ability to make the game easier for others. Um, you know, people are going to be coming at him hard as a rookie, as a guy that's that's coming in with a with uh, with some you know, with some accolades and, and some hype and things like that. I think he understands it. I think he's looking forward to that. Dennis, Coach Carlisle has high expectations for point guards. What makes you think that you're up to the task for that? I'm in a tough one. Coach Carlisle is a great coach. And I believe that, you know, two great minds. And I'm not a great mind yet. But I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to being that, learning from him and learning from Dirk and all the guys that I mentioned previously. I believe that when two great minds get together, success happens. Yeah, speaking what? of hype, you're already being projected as an all star in this league. Can you speak to that? <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> and I haven't even played a game in this league yet. And uh, what, what about that statue you wanted me to build? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm thankful for that. You know, I appreciate everything that comes my way, and I believe I'm deserving of it because I work so hard. Then, how do you balance the the aggressiveness that you play with and want to play with, and getting in the lane and getting to the rim? You shot a lot of free throws in NC State with making sure that everybody else gets their touches and is happy and get themselves in the, in the right place to be able to score. It's just something that I learned growing up. I played point guard my whole life. You know, I wasn't one of the kids that grew super early. So my whole life I've been having to learn how to get people involved and, and create my own shot. So I've been doing this since I was probably nine years old, just finding that balance. So it's pretty easy for me now. Dennis, we always hear about how the game is changing and the point guards are coming in the league more athletic. How do you feel like your athleticism really translates not just to this team, but the growing trend at that position in the league? I believe it translates well. Russell Westbrook is super athletic, and that's a guy I watch a lot of. And he dominated this year. He had a great year. And I think that's largely due to how, how athletic he is compared to other point guards. And I believe I can be similar to that in terms of above average athleticism. You had two triple doubles last year. You feel like the ability to affect the game in multiple ways is something that's kind of underrated in your game. People don't realize that. They see you as a great scorer. They don't realize you're a pretty good rebounder at your position and also a distributor. Right. That's a, that was true. Um, it's all politics, though. You know, I don't really, I don't bother myself with that. I just go out and play my game, and everything else take care of itself. Mark, you guys got a center, now you got a point guard relative to the order. What else do you want to get for? Are you hoping to get for season starts? I mean. We like what we have. You know, we're not going to rush out. Um, you know, with, with Dennis and Nerlens and and um, Harrison um, as a super young core. And, and you know, the other thing, I think Yogi and Dennis are going to push each other. You know, Yogi's super competitive. He's just, you know, he's he started a lot of games as a as a D League call up, basically a ten day. And I know, you know, he's like he's just as competitive as Dennis is, and they're going to push each other. And I think that's you know that young core is what we want to continue to build on and, and grow with and, and hopefully surprise a whole lot of people. You know, once we, we have a better feel, we, we can talk about adding, but I mean, we're not we're not out there looking to say, you know, saying we have to go find something. I think Dennis is gonna be able to come in and, and play and hopefully have an impact his first year and, and we don't want to take anything away from that. Do you feel pretty optimistic with the moves that you've made that you guys can be a return to the playoffs after a year? Yeah, we hope so. I mean, obviously we had a lot of injuries last year, and, and you know the bad news was we had a lot of injuries and it impacted our season. The good news is we ended up with Dennis, and I think you know with Dennis and, and 
a little bit more time together with Nerlens and our young core, I think we have the opportunity. We know we made a run last year and, and it didn't pan out, but I think we're going to be a lot better. Dennis, in the draft process, a lot of people nitpick stuff, and one of the knocks on you, I guess, was effort level. Is that frustrating that some people question your effort level in college? No, it wasn't frustrating. Like I said, I go out there and be the best Dennis Smith Jr. I can in every game. My teammates appreciated my effort, my coach and the rest of the staff appreciated my effort to the maximum level. So I think I did a good job with that, and they think the same. Dennis, how much did you feel like you proved that the ACL injury was behind you last season, and how much do you feel like you'll be stronger two years after that injury? I think I proved it a tremendous amount. I came back more explosive. My vertical increased by eight inches, and I mean, that's still that out. <laughs> no, I can't give it to you. <laughs> and that, it, it's still a question, though. So that's what I'm saying. I just control what I can control. And that's all I worry about. And next year, like you said, two years out, I think it'll keep increasing if I continue to work. Dennis, how do you view yourself defensively? I know you got that side of the ball. How do you want to improve as a defender? I want to I learn exactly how to play defense. You know, that's not something that we really was pressed about last year. And that's just the kind of staff we had. We were more offense oriented. That was our team. So we really didn't learn too much about defense. I'm looking forward to learning a lot about it this year. And I think that'll be the main thing, is learning how to play. Dennis, are you, would you consider yourself a vocal guy on the floor? And, and Rick, for a point guard, how important is being a, a vocal leader on the floor? Well, I, I really believe you know, the player has to play his personality. Um, you know, in, in Dennis's situation, you know, he's a guy coming into a team that's really kind of split down the middle. We've got a, a veteran aspect of our team with you know four or five guys that are well into their thirties, and we've got a very young young group. And I think it's a great balance um, situation for him to go to go into. He's going to learn a lot, an awful lot about uh, personalities. Um, there are some guys that are championship winning players. Uh, who, have, who have really proven it over an extended period of time in this league. Those will be great guys for him to watch. The young guys, as Mark says, you know, are, are going to push him and he's going to push them. Um, but in terms of his personality, you know, as we get into it, we'll, we'll figure out what works. You know, we, we don't try to take players and, and you know, reinvent who they are. Uh, we try to give them the tools to grow and become the best players that they can be. And, and, and you know, the biggest thing in our culture here is that we're all working to get better and we all only care about one thing and that's winning. Dennis, uh, how much time, if at all, have you spent in Texas? And what were your impressions of the Mavericks before they got interested in drafting you? Prior to this, I was in Texas for probably a total of about six days and that was three different times. So I didn't really get to see the city or anything like that. I just know it was hot. And I, know, and I know they quit. They beat LeBron in the final, so and I wanted them to win that year. So that's about, that's about all. I didn't want them to win. I didn't want LeBron to win. You didn't hear that. Dennis, is is the Rookie of the Year award a reasonable goal for you this year? I believe so. I believe it's very obtainable. Uh, it's the same guys I competed with in high school, and those are the, the highly touted rookies in this class. And I got a lot of faith in my abilities, and I'm a diligent worker, so I believe I can get that award. Speaking of those people, I believe you're the fourth point guard picked in this draft. Does that bother you, or do you feel like you should have gone ahead to number nine? Oh, it don't bother me at all. Everything happens for a reason. You know, that was whoever went first, second, or third, that's their destiny to go there, and it's my destiny to come here, so I'm just focused on me. Rick, what's it like? You haven't had this opportunity to really work with a with a high end, lottery level young talent that you could mold in a really long time. What so what what's this like for you? I mean, how much fun do you think this is going to be for you to well, see as a teacher? I just I just really impressed with Dennis's personality. Um, he's obviously a guy that has great confidence uh, on the one hand, but on the other hand, he has he has a very obvious humility. And so that's special to me. Um, you know, today's the first day that, that he and I have, have met in person. Um, we FaceTimed three days ago. I, I, I actually went and, and got an iPhone the day before. We met him because uh, I wasn't sure that, 
Anyway, I'm, I'm a Samsung guy, so I, you know, now I have to wear them. And so I got a secret number that's the Dennis Smith Jr. FaceTime number. Um, and you know, we, we uh, myself, Michael, Finley, and, and Donnie had a had a very direct conversation, you know, with him. We were, we're passing the phone around, you know, and uh, there were some tough questions asked. Um, and look, he he he. Held up, he holds up extremely well to scrutiny, you know. And I think, you know, what you see is is what you get here. You know, he's a no nonsense guy. That's, uh, you know, not a big talker. I think he's he's a guy that really wants to get out there and prove it. With the uh, rookie of the year talk and all that, a lot of rookies come in. They have to pay their dues. Do you expect to come in and and, and be uh, a, a leader of this team? I believe so. Like you said, we got a lot of veteran guys as well, but part of being a point guard is the same thing as being a quarterback. Regardless of what year it is, you got to come in and lead. Whether it's by example or hopefully, you got to accept that responsibility. Dennis, what was that call like when you first knew you were going to be a Maverick? Uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. I had my, my cousin Isaiah, my grandma, uh, and my sister with me, and my father. And it was just a surreal feeling. You know, it's something you look forward to your whole life. And then whenever it finally comes to fruition, it's like, you can't believe it's happening. But it really is, so it's just crazy. Dennis, what was the toughest question in that FaceTime chat? <laughs> <laughs> the toughest question in that FaceTime chat? Uh, I don't know, I would have to really think about that. I, I answer most of them pretty well, like you said, so it's just hard to say. <laughs> it's hard to say. A lot of athletes who go through the injury you did talk about, you know, the recovery period is such and such, but really it takes this amount of time to feel, you know, all the way back. Last year at NC State, did you, did you feel all the way back or did, did you feel like you were still sort of working your way back from that injury? I felt good. I dealt with the normal things like shin splints and, and that's probably about it with, uh, with the ACL injury and that, that was very common. That's the only problem I had. My knee never swelled up. Uh, I never missed a game. I didn't miss any practices. So I felt very well physically. And I felt great mentally. I got a lot of faith in God. And I believe whenever you work very hard, you gain confidence. And I, I attack my workouts how I was supposed to. So I was, I was great mentally and physically all year. Donnie, is the plan to have him play in both Orlando and Las Vegas or just Vegas? Just Vegas. With you being drafted by a team in the West, and there's ton, there are tons of point guards in the West, you know, MVP, MVP caliber kind of guys, who are you most excited to face? Careful here. <laughs> 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 we only play LeBron twice. But, um, I'm excited to play the guy that I look up to a lot. Like, I watch a lot of film on, so that's Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook and Damian Lillard out the West. What on so Westbrook's Paul game? Well, Chris Paul, I, just, I like how he plays the pick and roll. He's super cerebral, and he outthinks everybody. Um, Russell Westbrook is just relentless. He attacks at every opportunity, and, and he competes in every possession. This question is for Donnie and Mark. Uh, as Rick said, he's a different player than Jason did. Uh, thinking back, Jason's picture is over here. When you add a point guard to a franchise, and you're in effect handing the keys over to him, Those keys are earned, you know, um, and you know it's going to be interesting training camp. And I think we play for, and it's going to play for one of the best coaches, you know, in, in the NBA. That being said, I think internally you can't help but be excited about um, the potential. Um, but he, he, he wouldn't want it any other way. Just knowing the character of Dennis and knowing his family and his surrounding structure, um, he's going to want to earn those minutes. Um, he's a win truly a winner in every sense of the word. Yeah, I mean, but money talks, money plays, right? And I, I, Dennis is a money player. He's, he's here to produce, and the results will speak for themselves. You know, we, we can project and we can we can hope and we can talk about a lot of different things, but it's all just talking until he walks out onto the court. But the good news is, as you heard him say, he works hard and he 
prepares and watches tape. There's a lot of kids that will come in and just because they've been so much better physically and athletically than everybody at the different levels they've competed at, they don't really take the cerebral approach. And you know, knowing that Dennis likes to watch film, knowing that he likes to learn, I think that's going to be the difference maker. And like he said, when you put two people together that, that work hard and are smart you know, and are knowledgeable, you get, you get results. And to me, that, you know, like I said earlier, we can watch him athletically, but it's, it's how he approaches the game. It's a cerebral approach to the game and his willingness and, and desire to learn that makes a difference between a guy with all-star potential and someone who actually reaches that potential. So we're hoping when he walks down the court, you know, he, I'm not gonna say who, he's, who he compared himself to with the jump shot, but hopefully we'll have that kind of rookie year. <laughs> uh, I didn't even say that, though. That's just kind of, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say that. Oh, I didn't even well, he didn't say that. I, we take it all back, but hopefully he plays like that. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, uh, have you signed yet, or when does that little detail? Oh, I'm not the guy to ask that. You know, my agent is he's working, working through all of that, so we'll figure it out soon. But no, I haven't signed. Soon enough. <laughs> Rick, how, how important is, are people like Daryl Armstrong and God Shan God in shortening the adjustment period for Dennis and just really learning how to play point guard in the NBA? Well, both of those guys played in the league. Both of those guys grew up playing a point guard position and in different fashions. Um, both of those guys uh, have done a great job for us and have influenced our program uh, in a very positive way. So they're, they're going to help. They're going to help. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into becoming a highly successful NBA player. Um, we were with the practice facility before coming over here, and two guys that I wanted Dennis to meet right away were Jeremy Holsoppel and Chase Friedberg, who are our, our um, athletic performance uh, guys. And you know, they used to be called strength coaches, but now it's it's a whole different game. Training is so much more functional. There is strength involved, but you know, technique for running, all these kinds of things. I mean, and. You know, Dennis coming off the injury a year and a half ago or whatever it was, you know, these guys are going to be extremely important. They're going to find every little nook and cranny of things that, that need to be tweaked, strengthened, whatever, and, and we've got to build him into a guy um, that can stand up to the wear and tear of an NBA season. And a lot of work goes into that. And one of the things that we talked about on the FaceTime was, was that very fact and, you know, about the importance of having an attitude of enthusiasm, you know, towards those kinds of things. And I was very satisfied that he understood and that he's willing to take those challenges, which is really, really important. Dennis, I think bouncing off of that, I believe you worked out with God Shem God when you were in high school. Um, what impact did he have on you back then and how much are you looking forward to get back to work with him? Um, he had a great impact, you know. You, you hear a lot of stories about him and you probably get to meet him and you realize he's a humble guy. He has a lot of knowledge about the game, so I'm looking to be a sponge and taking everything I can, and I believe that he'll, he'll help me enhance my basketball career. Coach, how excited do you get when you hear a young player say, I want to learn the proper way of playing defense, and when you take his athletic ability, how does that factor into your defense? That was a great job of changing the conversation of the question. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I mean, this is, this is a fact that, you know, there, there's no player in his situation that comes into this that's, that can be totally prepared to play defense in the NBA. Uh, the pace, um, the, the, the strength difference, the speed difference, all those kinds of things. Um, but I think Dennis understands that, you know, staying on the court uh, to do that, you know, you've got to be strong in both areas. It's important to be able to attack the guy that's Gonna, you know, going to be attacking you at the other end, but you got to be able to guard them too, and you got to have a system in place where your teammates can help you do that. So um, that's going to be a big, probably one of the bigger parts of his learning curve. You know, I expect the the offensive stuff to happen, you know, pretty naturally, you know, just based on what I've seen on film. But you know, NBA defense is is uh, you know, it, it's a different uh, it's a different metabolic situation, and uh, there's a lot to learn. He understands that. Let's take a few more guys. Dennis, biggest misconception about you? What do you want to know about you? Biggest misconception. So that's basically what was most common in the media, the negative that's most common in the media. I would say 
that I don't play hard. You know, that was that was put out a lot. <clears throat> and we had a lot of things going on last year with our team. You know, we had a rough year. It was our we lost a lot of games. And even our coach Godfrey wasn't accustomed to that. You know, he's done a great job at NC State. He went to the to the to the big dance, I think five out of the last seven years. So that was a misconception of mine that I didn't play hard and I believe that Nobody at NC State believes that the fans or the players and the staff. And, um, you know, that's just something I would like everybody to know. I'm going to come out and give it my all and play as hard as I can. And also, one thing I'd like to add to that, I mean, really, this this young man should be judged on what happens from here going forward on the court. I mean, you know, really, everything else is just talk. Mark, you're getting closer to life after dark. How do you sort of assess where you guys are positioned. Do you feel pretty good about that? Well, if you ask Dirk, he's got about five more years. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, day by day, it's getting better. Obviously, um, with the young core, players have got to improve. Um, we think Orleans is going to get better, having had more time. I think Harrison can just take leaps and bounds above where he was last year. Um, you know, he had to make a big adjustment in roles, and, and he adapted very nicely. but. You know, you talk about working hard. Um, Harrison's been in the practice facility pretty much every morning at 7.15 a.m. Um, and sometimes coming back. And so he knows that we go as far as his improvement goes. And I think he's gonna be a great example um, for Nerlens and, and for Dennis and, and Wes the same way. You know, if, if Harrison, if HB's in at 7.15 or 7.30, you know, it's not a surprise if Wes is there not long after. And when you have your vets work, and Dirk's been there as, as well, and so when you have your vets working that hard, um, knowing that they're gonna be leading the next generation of Mavericks and setting the tone, I, I, th I think we're in a good position, you know? Um, I, I do think that the continuity of keeping the team together, the, the you know, willingness of, of our young guys to work um, and, and coach working with them, I think we're going to get better. And so, you know, we, we were fortunate. We went into last season kind of as a veteran team, hoping to, to make a run, and injuries kind of side sidetracked that. But I think, you know, getting Nerlens and, and with the other, getting Yogi and um, Seth, I think we've got a great young core that, you know, the sky's the limit. Mark, since you bought the team, the one thing you, you had kind of avoided was the lottery now that you've gone through it. In the league for as long as you have been, do you think the NBA can do anything to change or improve competitive balance in trying to improve situations where teams can sort of feel like they've got a shot quicker than they do? You know, the whole super team thing, and let me just tell you, um, I, I rate teams by, I mean, obviously the Warriors are champs, but behind the Warriors, I rate teams by how many sprained ankles away they are, right? You know, the Warriors are one sprained ankle away from not being champs. And, you know, last year we were about six sprained ankles away. Um, now hopefully we'll be maybe just one or two. Um, but yeah, I'm, look, I'm willing to compete against anybody and I don't think it's, there's a lot of need to change. Uh, free agents get to go where, where they want to go, but the nature of this business is no one plays forever. And on top of that, injuries happen. You know, we, we, we saw what injuries did to us. We've been in other situations where injuries have sidetracked us and what could have been a championship run but that's just the way it goes. So I don't think there's some overriding need to make some big, you know, um, significant changes. Mark, you, you're, you're speaking in, of New Orleans in the present tense. Do, do you expect to get a deal done with him before sure so, restricted yeah. free agency? Yeah, sure, I hope so, yeah. And if he does reach restricted free agency, is it an automatic match? I'm not allowed, to, you know, those NBA rules, if I say it's not that match, I don't need to add my, you know, Hall of Fame fine total. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, we're about to see your jersey. Uh, That's one, yep. guys. What, what went into your your, your number selection? <laughs> that oh, cool. man. I was doing the media circuit after after my name had got a call, and then they was like, all right, it's time to pick a number. So, you know, of course, I want number four, and uh, I couldn't get that. <laughs> you know, he did his thing while he was here, so that, that, that's great for him. Then I asked for 22. They said no. <laughs> then I said, "It's in the Raptors." <laughs> then I said, "Well, can I get five? 
no. Can I get, <laughs> can I get three? No. I said, man, y'all sure y'all called me for Dallas? <laughs> <laughs> and then we found that I could get one, so it worked out fine. And on that note. <laughs> Let us a little bit